Hello, it's Mark from Cars and Cameras, and today I have something very exciting. This is the new 2018 Mac Mini, finally upgraded for 2018 with the newer Intel processors, and we're going to talk all about that in a minute. So with the unit, you get documentation and a power cord, and the, and the unit, that's about it. Uh, it's identical in size pretty much to the previous Mac Mini. One little difference here is they cover up the uh, connector ports, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. On the back of the unit, I'm comparing it here to the previous model, and we'll talk more about uh, what's different on them. And so let's go over the new one. Two USB 3 ports, headphone jack, HDMI jack, and you have four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. Of course, your Ethernet, power cord, and on the previous generation, of course, your uh, power, your Ethernet, HDMI, two Thunderbolt 2, four USB-C 3s, and an XD uh, card slot, and an audio in, and a headphone jack. Okay, so when you plug in the Mac Mini to a 4K display, uh, it defaults to 1080p, and I went ahead and set it to the first 4K setting, um, and it does 4K at 3840 by 2160, and it will also do 4K at 4096 by 2160, both of those settings 60 hertz, which is pretty cool that out of the box, you don't have to do any software tricking, anything, it will do 4K, and it looks fantastic. Websites also look great uh, with the new um, uh, Mac Mini with the 4K display. As you can see here, just a small sample. It looks really good. Now, one thing I wanted to test out is on the previous generation Mac Minis, you could not load DaVinci Resolve. So I wanted to see if that was possible with the new Mac Mini. And uh, before I did that, I played with Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro, of course, worked uh, fantastic. Uh, it works really well with the previous uh, Mac Mini, so there's no problem there, even editing native 4K in the timeline. So there's no issues with that whatsoever. But I did want to test out DaVinci Resolve and see how that worked. And uh, so I went ahead and loaded it up. And to my surprise, uh, it allowed me to load up uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve, and it worked pretty good. Um, now, what I did is I really did an extreme test here, and it, it, it was a little uh, slow in playing back the raw DNG uh, clips, and I didn't suspect with 8 gigs of RAM that it was going to play them back smoothly, but it is possible to edit with this machine in DaVinci Resolve. So that is a plus. Okay, so let's recap some of the pluses on the new machine. The first one is faster Intel processors. And the next thing after that is that you can use uh, more software options, like you can load Resolve, which you couldn't do on the previous generation machine. It wouldn't work because of the uh, uh, slower graphics card. Another big plus is you can upgrade the RAM. That's huge. You can load this thing all the way up with 64 gigabytes of RAM, but you can do that down the road when the RAM comes down in price. And that's a big one. Now let's talk about a few things I don't like. The first thing I don't like is what happened to the SD card slot. There's no SD card slot on the back of the machine. Um, also, one of the other things is with the headphone jack on the previous generation, it was also a microphone port. And that's how I'm talking to you now. I'm using headphones and microphone all, all in one unit. And you can't do that right now with the new machine. So that's kind of a bummer. Maybe there'll be a workaround. But I would say all the pluses on the new machine outweigh uh, what the old machine can do. Because it's, and then that RAM is a big one. So guys, thank you for tuning in and taking a quick look at this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And be sure to hit that like button. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.